Thank you. Okay, so I'd like to talk about free will. And in particular, I want to address two questions concerning free will. First, what does it mean to say that we do something by choice? And second, do we ever do anything by choice? Okay, so we can all agree that even if we do certain things by choice, we can't do just anything by choice. So we can't spin our heads 360 degrees. We can't blow holes through concrete walls with our bare lips. Our bodies simply aren't up for these feats. And even if our body is up for some feat, it doesn't always qualify as an act of choice. So as newborn babies, our toes curl when the babies, sorry, when the doctors, uh, very smart doctors who are also babies, run their fingers <laughs> up the bottoms of our feet, our toes curl. Well, that tickles a little bit. It's an automatic reflex, so this is not an act of choice. We do not choose to curl our toes. Uh, we do, however, seem to choose uh, what we eat for breakfast, who our friends are, and how we dress our dogs. <laughs> so we determine the outcomes of these issues by choosing certain outcomes over others. So choices are things we can be proud of, like recycling, and dancing with our eyes closed. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, there are also things we can regret, like dancing with my eyes closed. Um, I'm just kidding. There are also things we can regret, like that uh, espresso I had last night, right before bedtime. So it doesn't make sense to regret something or be proud of something that wasn't done by choice. And to see that this is so, uh, consider the following example. So imagine a baby named Baby. Baby's a Virgo, a control freak, and it's Baby's first night out of the womb. Baby's lying awake, you know, pretty anxious, thinking, don't be a chump. Next time that doctor tickles your feet, keep your toes straight. Right? Now it doesn't make sense for Baby to feel like Baby got played for curling Baby's toes. Right? It wasn't up to Baby whether baby's toes curled. And so this just doesn't make sense. By contrast, it was up to me whether I had that espresso last night. Right? I chose the espresso. So what I'd like to do in trying to answer this question, what does it mean to say that we do something by choice, I want to look at these two examples, the toe curling on the one hand and my espresso drinking on the other, and I want to see what distinguishes the two. Why is only one of them an act of choice? whereas the other is not. Okay, so what does it mean to say that I had caffeine by choice? You might think to yourself, well, the difference between these two events is that in the case of the caffeine drinking, things could have gone differently, right? I could have had the decaf instead, and that's why I regret having the espresso. So here's the first proposal. When we say I had caffeine by choice, we mean I could have had decaf instead. Well, to see that this proposal doesn't work, just notice that it applies just as well to the case of the toe curling. Right? The baby's toes curled when the doctor uh, ran her finger up the bottom of baby's foot, but the toes could have easily remained straight had things gone differently in the womb. So uh, had the baby developed one of the disorders that the doctor was checking for, then baby's toes would have remained straight. Okay, so this proposal doesn't distinguish the two. The mere fact that things could have gone differently doesn't distinguish my caffeine drinking on the one hand from the toe curling on the other. So I give that an X. Next, I want to consider this proposal. So in the very situation in which I had caffeine, I could have had decaf instead. So why am I considering this proposal? When you look back at the toe curling and you ask yourself, how could that have been uh, different? How could that event have gone differently? What you do is you imagine differences in the background of the toe curling. Right? You imagine differences in the events leading up to the toe curling that would explain why the toes remained straight. Differences in how the baby developed in the womb, for instance. But when I look back at my caffeine drinking last night, and I ask myself, how could I have had decaf instead? I don't imagine any differences in the events leading up to my choice. So I don't, for instance, think to myself, 
If only my parents hadn't forced me to be the state racquetball champ at age six, maybe I would have chosen the decaf. That's not how it works. I look back at my caffeine drinking and I think to myself, in that very situation where all the events leading up to it were exactly as they were, I could have just chosen the decaf. That's what I think. And so maybe this is what it means to say that I had the caffeine by choice. All right, so this is closer to the truth, but it's still not quite right. And to see that it's not quite right, consider a variant of the original baby example. So imagine that a distinguished philosopher, Thomas Nagel, he was a professor of mine to whom I owe many of these ideas today, suppose that he has hooked up baby to a nuclear toe curling device. Okay, so this device here, the device has a small amount of uranium in it. If the uranium decays, baby's toes curl. If the uranium doesn't decay, baby's toes stay straight. In fact, the uranium decayed and baby's toes curled. Okay? Now I ask you, in that very situation in which the uranium decayed and baby's toes curled, could things have gone differently? Well, according to many physicists, the answer is yes. According to them, due to quantum physics, even if we roll the entire universe back to the, exactly the state it was in when the uranium decayed, right before the uranium decayed and baby's toes curled, still things could have gone differently. Right? The uranium might not have decayed and baby's toes could have remained straight. And so according to these physicists, uh, this proposal here again fails to distinguish an act of choice, my act of drinking the caffeine, from an act that was not an act of choice, baby's toe curling from the uranium device. In both cases, according to the physicists, had everything been exactly the same leading up to it, due to quantum mechanics, things could have gone differently. And just to emphasize this point, that this proposal doesn't work, uh, notice that the physicists would also say that in my situation, where I actually drank the espresso, if we were to roll the entire universe back to the state I was in, and the physical state of everything around me was exactly as it is, right before I chose the espresso, and then we let things unfold, according to these physicists, I might have chosen the decaf instead. And now we ask ourselves, is that what I mean when I say I had the caffeine by choice? Do I mean that due to some quantum fluke, things could have gone differently? Right? When I look back, do I regret that the universe failed to provide some quantum fluke that would have allowed me to have decaf instead of caffeine? Obviously not. I don't regret anything about anything in the universe except what I did, all right? And so when I look back at this caffeine drinking, I think to myself, uh, sorry, this can't simply be the correct answer. There's more to it because this applies to both situations, right? And this applies even if I uh, could, have had the could have had the decaf due to some quantum fluke. But that's not what we mean. When I look back at my caffeine drinking, I think in that very situation in which I had the caffeine, I could have had the decaf instead because I was in full control of what was going on, right? It was up to me which drink I had. I freely determined which drink I had. And it was in my power to have the caffeine. It was also in my power to have the decaf. This is what I mean uh, when I say that I had the caffeine by choice. Okay, so we'll give that a check mark, and I've finished question one. I've said what it means to say that we do something by choice. Let's turn to the second question. Do we ever do anything by choice? Oh, let's back up. Do we ever do anything by choice? Well, it certainly feels as though we do all sorts of things by choice, right? From my perspective, when I was given what appeared to be a choice, the caffeine or the decaf, it felt from my perspective as if either one was in my power, that I could make it the case that I had decaf and I could make it the case that I had caffeine. That's how it felt. And then I had the sensation of making up my mind and reaching for that espresso and dumping it in my mouth. 
Unfortunately, things are not always as they seem. There we go. Okay, so scientists have discovered that what goes on in our minds depends on what's going on in our brains, right? And so when I had that thought, hmm, espresso sounds good, that's because my brain was in a state that gave rise to this thought. Scientists have also discovered that how our hands move, how our legs move, how our mouths move, our bodily motions depends on what's going on in our brain. So when I had the thought, hmm, espresso sounds good, that's because my brain was in a state that gave rise to this thought. When I said, I'd like an espresso, please, and I reached for an espresso and dumped it in my mouth, that's because my brain was in a series of states that gave rise to these behaviors. So whatever controls my brain controls my mind and my body. For instance, if Professor Nagel is controlling my brain remotely through this computer chip, then Professor Nagel is controlling my mind and my body, right? And so when I thought to myself, hmm, espresso sounds good, that's because Professor Nagel put my brain in a state that caused me to have this thought. And when I had the sensation of freely deciding to have the espresso, that's because Professor Nagel put my brain in a state that gave me that sensation. And then when I said, I'd like an espresso, please, reach for the espresso and drank it, that's because Professor Nagel put my brain in these series of states that gave rise to these various behaviors. So in this scenario, where Professor Nagel is controlling my brain remotely, do I qualify as having the caffeine by choice? Well, I might qualify as having the caffeine by Professor Nagel's choice, but clearly I don't qualify as having the caffeine by my choice in this hypothetical scenario. Right? Why? Because some outside force over which I have no control determined that I would have the caffeine. Okay. So now let's ask, what about the actual world? So that was a hypothetical. Fortunately, it's false. Professor Nagel's not controlling my brain. There's no computer chip in my brain. Now, did I drink the caffeine by choice? Well, unfortunately, scientists have discovered that there's another outside force over which I have no control that's determining every state of my brain. Indeed, it's determining every state of every brain, including your own. This force is so powerful, it determines every state of every physical object in the universe. So by now, you probably know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about P90X. <laughs> okay, no. I'm talking about the laws of nature. <laughs> okay? So you might think to yourself, well, the laws of nature, they can keep their hands off my mind and my body because I'm fully in control. And I might think to myself, look, the laws of nature can step aside when it comes time to deciding what I have to drink because I'm fully in control. Unfortunately, scientists have taken a careful look at our brains. And what they found is that what best explains the behavior of the particles that make up our brains is exactly what best explains the behavior of the same sorts of particles when they make up planets and stars and chairs and robots, and computers, donuts, puppy dogs, every physical object in the universe, namely the fundamental laws of physics. So did I have this caffeine by choice? Well, when I had the thought, hmm, espresso sounds good, that's because the fundamental laws of physics determined that my brain was going to go into a state that gave rise to that thought, right? The earlier states of my brain, together with my surrounding physical environment, together with the laws of physics, determined that my brain was going to go in the state and give me that sensation of thinking that. And when I had the sensation of deciding to have the caffeine, that's because the laws of physics determined that my brain was going to go into a state and give me that sensation. And when I said, I'd like an espresso, please, and reached for the espresso, dumped it in my mouth, that's because the laws of physics determined that my brain would go into a series of states 
that would cause these behaviors. So, the answer to this question, well, is it true or false? In the very situation in which I had caffeine, I could have had decaf instead because it was up to me which drink I had. Well, no. The answer is false. It was not up to me. I drank the caffeine because there was some outside force over which I had no control that determined that my brain went, to, went into a certain state that caused me to drink the caffeine, right? namely the laws of physics. So some philosophers, they want to have their cake and eat it too. They agree with me that there's an outside force over which I have no control that determined that I would drink the espresso. And yet they maintain that I drank it by choice, that it was nevertheless up to me. So frankly, I feel sorry for these philosophers. <laughs> I do, because look, this outside force has determined that I have the correct view and that they have the incorrect view. <laughs> Suckers, right? <laughs> Not their fault, but, but they're wrong. All right, so do we ever do anything by choice? Well, look, what applies to my actions, my act of drinking the caffeine, applies to your actions too. It applies to all of our actions. The answer is no. Why not? So let me just summarize the argument that I've given you. I'll give it in a general form. First, if there's an outside force over which we have no control that determines what we're thinking and what we're doing, then we don't do anything ever by choice. That's my first premise. Okay, if what we think and do is determined by an outside force over which we have no control, we never do anything by choice. Second, scientists, unfortunately, have discovered that there is such an outside force. It's the laws of physics. Okay? So what we think and do is determined by an outside force over which we have no control, namely, the laws of nature. Hence, we never do anything by choice. Not even dance with our eyes closed. <laughs> All right. Thank you.